Hello and thanks for watching. This is uh, Dr. Matthew Kamiski from uh, Westchester University. I am the author of Chapter 4 on uh, Technology for Health Education and specifically this uh, video cast is going to talk about uh, formative assessment techniques uh, that can be used in health education. I'll lead with uh, one of my favorite ways uh, formative assessment techniques is with Poll Everywhere. Poll Everywhere is a really kind of versatile tool that uh, allows for student input on their phones or on their computers. Uh, and so, and it has a tremendous amount of versatility. So if you just kind of go pop into the software uh, and see what are some of the options that they have in terms of what kind of polls and student input you can create, you can just do traditional, uh, like a multiple choice quiz here. You can do a word cloud. And I just kind of showed you a little bit of an example of a word cloud here that uh, I did recently with a group of teachers talking about this very same topic. Well, and I said one of the early parts of the presentation was, well, how do you, what are you doing presently? Because I kind of wanted to know uh, what they were already using. So I didn't have to duplicate it. And so this was their reply and a word cloud will, uh, so you put a prompt up on the board and here was the prompt and they could either use their computers with this web address or their phones uh, with texting to a phone number and they would reply to this and depending upon the frequency of the words used they would be put into larger font so you can see clearly that Google Classroom was one of the more prominent ways that they were using technology you could see Kahoot and you can see Plickers and Schoology which is a learning management software Edpuzzle but the real runaway winner <laughs> was Google Classroom, All right? So I knew that I could stray away from that, whereas I could focus on some other things. So that's just one example. And there's so many things that it does. And one thing tough about educational technology is it always seems to be changing and you got a lot to keep up with, which is part of it, but it can be daunting. So uh, Poll Everywhere is nice because it's one platform that does many different things, as you can see here. So the word cloud, clickable image so if you're doing like muscles or something you're talking about muscles you know here's a picture of a muscle which of the following is the identify the the muscle itself the name for that muscle uh surveys uh, i remember i asked after the last election well how many of you actually voted because i want to know how many voted it was too low so uh there's a whole bunch of other things upvote and downvote so of the groups that presented you know which ones do you think uh best encapsulated this kind of intervention strategy or um, have people up or down vote different groups and so you can kind of see who who they thought did best there's a whole bunch of different ways to use it so uh, it's quite a versatile tool and i tried to put in some examples for you and i put in word cloud um, like when i say marriage what word comes to mind a great way to kind of lead into relationships uh, there's a clickable image there open response is great especially if you want to do like back channel questions so you're presenting on something or a guest speaker is presenting and uh, students can sometimes be hesitant to raise their hands and answer. So this is kind of a, uh, an anonymous way to do so where you can also screen the questions. What a great idea. Uh, what questions about contraceptives do you have that, that were not asked? And so that can be a back channel question. Icebreaker used to start a question. Tell me about a time you failed and why that failure was the best thing for you you know, talking about the ups and downs of life and, you know, continuing to try and move forward. Up and down vote, I mentioned, if fruits and vegetables are so important to your diet, why are they so drastically under-consumed? You know, and then the students are going to respond and five words or less. And then the next part of this would be to upvote or downvote uh, all of the responses. And then the ones that you're, you're probably going to look at the ones that were upvoted the most, and then maybe what are, and go to the other end and what are the, which ones were downvoted the most. Leaderboard, uh, which group skit best exemplifies the assigned conflict resolution strategy? So you did sk skits about conflict resolution, uh, who not only use their conflict resolution strategy appropriately, but who also provide uh, a consistent pressure, wh which was representative of a real world condition. So leaderboard, uh, emotional scale, you know, kind of uh, almost like, a Likert scale or um, other scales that kind of uh, measure, you know, one through four or something of that sort. How how would you rate your ability to administer CPR to an unconscious victim? Okay, and this could be 
uh, numbers or it could be faces. So they kind of pick it. Uh, brainstorm, uh, submit ideas and vote for one favorite instead of upvote and downvote. What is the best way you can personally address climate change? So you submit one and then they vote for their favorite only. Okay. And then ranking, put things in order. Put the following drinks in order from their highest to lowest alcohol content. Or put these hand washing steps in the correct order. And so all of these uh, kind of pulled everywhere uh, options are giving you data, giving you formative assessment information about how well your students are learning the material. Kahoot, people are more likely to hear of Kahoot. And I love Kahoot. Okay, so this is a perfect example of gamification. And it's almost like a little bit of a updated version of the Jeopardy templates that so many people used to use to review. So if I go to Kahoot here, and again, you can create a free account. Uh, this is a quiz that I created for our practicum class, which is just before student teaching. And I basically made a whole bunch of questions were aligned with the courses that students had completed. And so the way it works is uh, they're going to log into the game. They're going to, they're going to create a name for themselves in the Kahoot. And one of the nice things about Kahoot is if someone uses an inappropriate name, then you can click on it and it's it zapped and it's gone. Okay, so that way I always tell people you have to reply with your full name, first name and last name. And if it doesn't have that, it's gone. All right, and you can actually download the results of a Kahoot and to see how students did if you want to actually use it for um, more formal assessment purposes. So anaerobic activities performed without the answer would be here, oxygen. And so when the students are playing, the question will appear on the overhead projector. And then on their screen, they're going to get it divided into these four colors. And then they're going to pick, just basically tap on the color or click on the color if they're using a computer, correct response. And then based upon the correctness of the answer and the speed of the answer, they're going to rank all the assigned points and the leaderboard will be established. And there's a little music that goes along with it. And you can uh, this one's set for 20 seconds, but I could lower the number of seconds if I wanted. All right. Uh, if you're worried about when kids are logging in, and again, they're going to use an inappropriate name, just don't project it up on the screen yet and wait for everyone to log in. And then inappropriate, you can get rid of, and then you're going to project it to the overhead. So you don't have to worry about that. All right. This is the basic Kahoot, but there are upgrade versions where you can get, uh, you know, more versatility in it. Uh, and this is per month, you know, uh, different question types, collaborations, and, and advanced reports. But again, that's really up to you. I find the, the free Kahoot works really well and kids absolutely love it. Speaking of old school, here's an here's, here's interactive PowerPoint. Uh, if you don't like Kahoot's or you just love Jeopardy, and hey, who doesn't love Jeopardy? I love Alex Trebek. Uh, you're going to... Uh, you can use this Jeopardy quiz show template. This was created by Microsoft. It's available on the internet. And basically what you do is you, here's the main grid, and then category one, question 10. Category one, question 10. You would basically write in the question here, and then the response, okay? And do that for each of the cells in the grid. And then after the answer is displayed, you hit the, you hit the back button. It'll take you back to this board here. And each time that you go to a question, there would normally be a question here, and then you click it again and you get the answer. I haven't filled it in yet. And then when you go back, then the color of that number has changed. And so the only since the template's already been created by Microsoft, all you have to do is go through each of these different slides and write in the question and then write in the answer. You're gonna see what students know and what they don't know based upon this formative assessment. You may have heard of clickers. Basically what you do is each, each student gets one of these clicker cards and you can kind of see on the card that each side of it is kind of a letter A, B, C, or D. And what you do is you ask a, a question and then the students hold, hold the card up so if they hold like the letter this is currently showing answer d so if the if, if there's three four answer choices and d is the correct answer they would hold answer d up then what you do is you basically take your phone and you pan across the room and then the phone the, the camera on the phone will pick up the clicker cards and each of these clicker cards is individual to a student so this is clicker card number three 
So if this student here has clicker card number three and she held up choice D, I know that she responded correctly and I'll have clicker card number three assigned to her so I'll know how well individual students are performing. So it's nice when your clicker cards, like I said here, printed on cardstock so that it's nice and rigid. Don't laminate because the glaze can interfere with your camera. If you want to have students hold the card face down, that way they can't kind of steal answers from one another until the reveal when all the cards go up. Okay, so clickers are wonderful. And again, a nice formative assessment technique to see what students know and don't know. Nearpod, uh, it's, an, it's a form of an interactive presentation, okay, an assessment tool. So everything kind of gets bundled into one. It's like a PowerPoint. It's like a, it's like a poll everywhere. It has uh, formative assessment techniques built into it. There's actually even pre-made lessons, and I just kind of took snippets of a couple, making friends, how to address stress gender stereotypes in the media, and all of these are actually uh, pre-formatted Nearpod presentations that you can use, all right? So one of the great things about it and is that you have, you can have everybody do it almost synchronously at the same time and have all your students move through the lesson at the same time, or you can set it up where it's self-paced, where they move through it based upon their mastery of the material at their own time. And if they don't finish it in class, then they can continue it out of class. And again, you can put in quizzes, you can put in polls, you can put in videos. So there's a whole bunch of functionality tools and it can be delivered in a self-paced manner, which is great. Okay, Edpuzzle. Uh, now Edpuzzle allows you basically to uh, crop and, and make some video so, so say you have a digital video that you want to show in class, it's too long, it's 50 minutes, and I'm really only interested in, in, in 10 of the minutes. So it allows you to crop the video down to an appropriate size, and one of the best things about it is that you can overlay questions on top of the video. In the old, old school days, you would have to pause the video and ask a question, or you'd put up on the board, you know, what, uh, what questions there were and what time the, what time. Uh, students should be looking out for the material, or and if they missed it, then it was, it was, then it was gone, and they weren't able to answer it. So Edpuzzle does a wonderful job of just embedding the question or the comment from the teacher directly on the video, so there's no confusion about if and when it was asked. Okay. So a nice free feature. QR code stands for quick reference, and basically you can. Uh, one of the things I like, maybe the best way to show this is just with a, a lesson that uh, I saw recently where there was an article titled, Are You Getting Enough Micronutrients? And so what on, on the walls of the classroom were these QR codes. And the students would go over with their tablet or their phone and they would take a picture of the QR code and it would immediately link to this article here. Okay, And then once they were at that particular article, then they would write the responses to these questions. Okay, and then the teacher would evaluate the questions. Okay, so a nice way of, you know, using these quick reference codes to point people at uh, content that the teacher wants, wants the students to master. It's almost like an updated version of a web quest. Some of my other favorite uh, tools, uh, if you're not familiar with NetSmarts, it's a great website that has things about, uh, you know, digital, you know, um, digital concerns for students while browsing the web. So a lot of interesting things. Uh, block poster creator, class dojo, some noise monitoring. Uh, so when you get time, check out some of these. One of my favorites is, is uh, classroom screen and all of these different features, clock, timer. I use this all the time with group presentations, uh, traffic light, stop, start, things to work about, a little text box to write messages up for students, uh, a QR code, sound, sound level monitoring, so uh, whether the group's getting too noisy or not. A lot of different features on Classroom Screen. Uh, we're all fairly familiar with collaborative Google Classroom. One of the great things about the G Suite and these collaborative cloud documents is students can work together on a project. Okay, but not only for projects for them to work on outside of class, but they can also do things inside of class. What uh, different exercises can help to build or strengthen uh, muscle groups. So I assign basically uh, six different teams and I sent them this link. And this is a, 
where all of the people who click the link are able to edit the document. And so what they had to do was for each of the muscle groups decide upon an, an exercise that worked that particular group. And so it was a little bit of a free-for-all. It was kind of neat. All of these different students came into this one document and there was a whole bunch of muscles, quads, rhomboids, abdominals. First person, so if I were doing quadriceps and one person put the leg press and that means all the other groups could not do it. So they had to pick a new exercise. And so it was kind of neat for them to have to think about, well, what does the muscle do? What are some exercises? Uh, did somebody else take that exercise for me? If it's already taken, I have to go find a different one. And then in the end, we got this nice document that had a whole bunch of alternatives to promote diverse workouts. So instead of doing the same thing every day about di different exercises that work the same muscle group. Okay, and again, you can see what students know using this collaborative cloud document. Google Blogger, again, getting input from students about what they know, blog about a field trip to a health fair, post one question to a guest speaker, assign one student to be the class scribe, okay, and the notes get posted for everyone. A current health blog, so instead of having to you know, come in and do a little presentation. They just kind of blog about it. Uh, there's a nice formative assessment technique called best summary, you know, with five minutes remaining in class, you know, have them summarize what they learned into the blog without notes. Okay. A hundred word maximum. And at the start of the next class, you know, re review the best blog and why it was. So learning management software, the LMSs, things like D2L, Schoology, Google Classroom, one of the things that they really allow for that I love is what's called a flipped classroom, where instead of they come in, they hear the students, the teacher lecture and different activities, and then they do homework, the lecture, okay, takes place at home, okay, and then the classroom activities take place with one another, okay, so students learn the material at home from usually from a video very much like this one, okay. And then when they come to class, then they do the application side of it with their peers. Okay, example, create a video about you as the teacher, creates a video about a mis misleading advertising and typical uh, advertising techniques. And then in class, you have a series of print or video advertisements, and then students have to analyze them in light of the video they watched for homework. Okay, so it frees them up to do more, app more higher order thinking and more application based. Uh, pursuits in class. Uh, I put in some other, if you have time, which I don't have time in this video to explore, but uh, feel free to check out these additional uh, formative assessment techniques.